In 2019, Russia is expected to launch a new commercial aircraft that is expected to compete with the Boeing MAX, which is currently grounded globally due to the crisis. Half a decade has passed, and the Urquid MC-21300 is expected to enter mass production in 2025 after a long period of delays, while the 737 MAX was embroiled in controversy last year. Does Russia have a long-term plan to quickly kick Boeing out of this aircraft segment, while the American manufacturer has not yet fully recovered? Let's find out in today's episode. With the 737 targeted, will the Russian aircraft prove to be in a better position than Boeing's? In this race, one factor that cannot be ignored is cost, a key factor influencing the decisions of airlines around the world. With a list price of about 91 million US dollars, the MC-21300 is significantly cheaper than the nearly 130 million US dollars of the MAX 9. More notably, according to the CEO of Rostec, Russian airlines can even buy this aircraft model at an attractive price of only about 37 million US dollars. This is an extremely important advantage in the context of airlines looking to cut operating costs while still ensuring optimal operational efficiency. In terms of economics, the MC-21 is clearly a much more attractive option than its rival from Boeing. In addition to the cost factor, the cabin design is also a significant highlight that helps the Russia jet score points in the eyes of passengers. Compared to the 737, the MC-21 has a more spacious cabin, providing a more comfortable flight experience. While this may not be a key factor in determining sales, it certainly affects passenger satisfaction and can be an important competitive advantage. As passengers increasingly care about the flying experience, small differences such as more spacious seats, more legroom, or better cabin lighting can all add up to a big plus for an aircraft model to win over the market. However, the MAX 9 still has its own advantages, especially in terms of capacity. While the MC-21 can carry up to 211 passengers, the MAX is slightly better, with a capacity of up to 220. In terms of range, both aircraft models have an operating range of around 3,300 nautical miles, but under ideal conditions, the MAX 9 can reach a little further, up to 3,550 nautical miles. This gives it some flexibility to operate longer routes without the need for multiple refueling stops. One factor that could worry Boeing is market confidence. Despite the grounded 737 MAX models returning to the skies one by one, the continued incidents involving the aircraft have left many airlines hesitant to add the MAX to their fleets. The uncertainty surrounding the Boeing jet could create a golden opportunity for the MC-21, especially in markets looking for alternatives to traditional narrow-body aircraft. While Western Airlines may be reluctant to choose the MC-21 due to political and certification factors, in other regions such as Asia, the Middle East, and South America, the aircraft could become a potential option. There is no denying that the Russia new plane is emerging as a formidable competitor in the narrow body segment, challenging the dominance of the Boeing aircraft and even the Airbus A320neo. With its cost advantage, more spacious cabin design, and strong growth potential, the MC-21 has the opportunity to capture a significant market share in markets less affected by political barriers. However, the decision to choose between these two aircraft lines will still depend on the specific business strategy of each airline. If low operating costs, flexibility, and technological innovation are the priorities, the MC-21 will be a worthy choice, but if you need a proven aircraft with a large support network and easy access to maintenance services globally, the MAX 9 is still a safe bet. Returning to the reason for the MC-21's creation, buying a certified ready-to-fly aircraft like the 737 would certainly be a quicker and less risky path than developing a completely new aircraft from scratch. The question is, does Russia really have the time to pursue this challenging journey, or is it betting on a long-term strategy with many risks? But before we go looking for the answer, if you are new or haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then show us your support by clicking the subscribe button so you will be the first to see our upcoming videos. Now, let's continue. Previously, the Russian aviation industry was closely tied to Western suppliers, not only in purchasing aircraft, but also in supplying components, electronic systems, and engines. Even Russian-made aircraft had to rely on foreign technology and supplies. 
This put Russia in a difficult position when Western sanctions were imposed in 2022, leaving it virtually isolated in the global aviation supply chain. However, Russia refused to surrender. Instead of being outdone by other aviation powers, it chose to stand up, be self-reliant, and strive to break free from dependence. Developing a completely domestic commercial aircraft is not only a strategic move, but also a source of national pride, proving that Russia is capable of producing modern aircraft without Western support. In fact, Russia's ambition to build its own commercial aircraft is not a new one after the sanctions. As early as 2007, when it was still working closely with Western companies, Russia saw the need to replace its aging Tupolevs with a more modern aircraft. As a result, the Yakovlev Design Bureau, a part of the Rostec Aviation Corporation, launched a project to develop a completely new narrow-body aircraft called the Yak-242. Initially, the program was implemented with the support of many foreign partners, but after Russia achieved domestic certification in 2016, the project was officially renamed the Yakovlev MS-21, also known internationally as the MC-21. Everything seemed to be going according to plan, until the conflict between Russia and Ukraine broke out. This geopolitical crisis has not only caused serious economic consequences, but also caused Russia to face numerous barriers in accessing Western components. Engine systems, composite materials, avionics, all were disrupted, pushing the program into a state of delay. But instead of giving up, Russia is more determined than ever to become technologically self-sufficient. President Vladimir Putin made an ambitious statement. Russia will produce at least 1,000 domestically built commercial aircraft by 2030. To realize that goal, Russia has poured more than $10 billion into the MC-21 program, a huge figure that shows the priority the government places on domestic aviation. Although the production schedule is still challenging, the jet has received more than 300 orders, mainly from domestic airlines such as Aeroflot, and Rossiya Airlines. This proves that despite being isolated by the West, Russia still finds a way to promote its own aviation industry. What is special about the MC-21 is that it is not simply an aircraft project, but also a symbol of self-reliance, of the spirit of overcoming difficulties to affirm its position on the world aviation map. Previously, the commercial aviation industry was almost the playground of giants like Boeing and Airbus, but Russia is trying to change that. They not only want to produce aircraft for the domestic market, but also gradually bring the narrow-body jet to the international market, competing with popular aircraft lines such as the Boeing 737 MAX and Airbus A320neo. The aircraft comes in two main versions, the MC-21-200 and the 300. The 200 is smaller in size, with a capacity of 132 to 165 passengers, depending on the seating arrangement, while the 300 is larger, with a capacity of 163 to 211 passengers. In addition to the difference in passenger capacity, the two variants also have different ranges. The 200 can fly approximately 3,500 nautical miles, while the other has a slightly shorter range of approximately 3,200 nautical miles. One of the key milestones in the development of the MC-21 was on June 8, 2016, when the 300 variant was officially launched in Siberia. This is not only a commercial event, but also marks a significant step forward in the aviation industry when the MC-21 becomes one of the first aircraft lines in the world to apply the technology of manufacturing wings from composite materials without using an autoclave. This makes the production process of aircraft wings more flexible, reduces costs, and optimizes aerodynamic performance. The highlight of the jet is also its advanced aerodynamic design especially the highly efficient wing system. To enhance its competitiveness with Airbus and Boeing aircraft lines, in 2021, Russia upgraded the MC-21 wings with polymer composite materials produced by the country itself. The new wing manufacturing technology uses a modern, patented vacuum infusion method, allowing the production of high-precision and lightweight parts. The initiative received an investment of up to 4 billion rubles, equivalent to about 45 million US dollars, helping composite materials account for up to 40% of the total weight of the airframe. Thanks to that, the MC-21 possesses a structure that is both strong and light, helping to improve fuel efficiency and increase operational capacity. 
Initially, the MC-21 was equipped with Pratt & Whitney GTF 1400G engines, one of the most modern turbofan engines in the world. However, due to the impact of sanctions from the West, Russia has had many difficulties in accessing and importing this type of engine. To ensure that the MC-21 program is not interrupted, the state corporation Rostec quickly sought an alternative solution with domestic products. As a result, the MC-21 switched to using the PD-14 engine developed by Aviad Vigatel. The PD-14 is not only designed to be compatible with the MC-21 family, but is also one of the first entirely Russian-built turbofan engines in decades. The engine was officially certified on January 20, 2020, opening up prospects for a more self-sufficient domestic aviation industry. There is no denying that Russian aircraft, especially the MC-21, have many notable highlights. However, in order to develop and compete in the global market, the Russian aviation industry still faces significant obstacles. One of the biggest challenges today is the supply of aircraft components and spare parts. Russian airlines are struggling to maintain their fleets amid Western sanctions, making it extremely difficult to access spare parts for imported aircraft. To maintain operations, many airlines have had to dismantle components from aircraft that are no longer in service, creating a chain of aviation safety consequences. This situation may continue as long as the sanctions remain in effect. In response to this pressure, Russia has sought to import components through unofficial channels. Some reports indicate that the country has purchased spare parts through intermediary countries such as Turkey, the UAE, and Tajikistan, countries that are not subject to Western sanctions. However, this solution is only temporary because of unstable supply, high costs, and most importantly, the difficulty in ensuring quality. The use of components of unknown origin can pose serious risks to the safety of the aircraft. In addition to the issue of spare parts, the airplane also faces another major obstacle, international certification. Despite its great potential, the MC-21's failure to be certified by the European Union Aviation Safety Agency on March 14, 2022, has posed a major obstacle to its export potential. Given the political tensions, especially the conflict in Ukraine, it is difficult for Russia to regain recognition from Western certification bodies soon. This means that the MC-21 is almost unable to access important international aviation markets, such as Europe and North America, severely limiting the expansion of this aircraft line. If Russia can find solutions to these challenges from securing domestic parts supplies to achieving international certification, it could become a serious contender in the global aerospace industry. But to do so, it will need not only technical advances, but also complex political hurdles.